welcome to my channel well the other day i got kind of like bored and i've uh, got a lot of knife projects and stuff i can do but i wanted to take my mind off knives and everything else and just trying to pick a lock as a challenge uh trying to put a handle on a knife and everything else is is a challenge too but this is different this is you know like it's like riding a bicycle and stuff. You have to practice at first when you get back on. You might not have to go back to training wheels, but you're going to be a little bit wobbly at first. And this particular lock here is a Master Lock uh, Pro Series 6850. Yeah, I'm not padding the vise, you know, the lock or anything because I don't know. Anyway. This particular lock here, I went to pick it, and it it took me a while at first to, to pick it open. But I want to go through a few things. This is for people who, if you're progressing beyond the, the basic master lock, four pin lock, and you're and you're wanting to get a little bit more of a challenge, uh, these are not these are not bad. It's a solid brass body, and I'm not gonna pick it. I mean, I'm not gonna gut it, which is you know take it all apart. I'm just gonna show you. My tincture wrench, I'm going top of the keyway. I tried bottom of the keyway, which is down here. You can still do it, but you see how much room that's that's taking up and and uh, getting in the way of your pick. So I'm going top of the keyway, and this is the thickest one they've got. It's a one millimeter. And I'm going, if you look at the lock, you can tell this is the way it opens. You know, this is the way if you inserted a key, this is the way it would open, so... I'm picking it that way to the right and like I said at first it took me quite a bit to open this lock because I was I didn't know what I was doing I was going through and you know feeling each pin and getting clicks and all that other stuff see that that's counter rotation and sometimes that can happen because your your pick is hitting the warding it's not really hitting the pin see that that was only two pins that I had to pick to get that <clears throat> now because we have the key we can look at what is known as the bidding and this is the way the pins are are resting when you go to pick it and counting from the first cut this is just the shoulder this doesn't count this is pin one two three Four. I think I got it wrong. One, two, three, four, five. Because it's a five-pin lock. I was trying to count that, but this is what I said is, is part of the shoulder. <clears throat> so, if if you've got a bottom of the keyway tensioner down here, you this space is all completely taken up. And this cutout right here is the warding. You see it's sticking up that way. And that's just to prevent it from being so easy if you're picking that you wouldn't hit something. Inside the lock, you can see this. This is this is that warding, is that shell. So when you're picking and you're and you're going up, you're going in and you're applying tension. That's your tension wrench. That's the part the torque that you're putting on there. And you're doing that to, to try to find a binder. One of these five pins in here, when you push on it, is not going to be springy. It's going to be solid. And when you push up on it, you're going to push up until you get some kind of reaction out of the lock. You're going to, either going to get a click, which means that that was a serration, or you set that pin. And the way to tell if you... the difference. This took me quite a while to figure out when you've got a pin set. <clears throat> because when you've got a pin set, that means it's, it's where it needs to be. If you push on it anymore, it will go sometimes. It will go further up. That's called an overset. It's just as bad. The shear line is like a little circle right here. You want all your pins on the top lined up for this to turn. And all the pins on the bottom have got to be lined up like, like in a key. As if a key was sitting there. You're, you're trying to simulate that. The way we get this to happen, the top of the pins right here got a spring pushing down on them so if you release all the tension they're going to go right back to the shear line and sit there and block 
the rotation of that cylinder. <clears throat> anyway, at first I was going through a pin one was springy, pin two, you know, I get a click, you know, and I was going through and I was, because if you look at this, it looks like it should be complicated to open. I mean, one of the things that stops you when you're when you're picking is a low set pin in front of a high set pin. And the reason why that is, is if you're pushing through here and you're, and you lever, you know, this is, this is all, your pick's got to fit in through the keyway. So if you're going in and you're trying to hit this guy, if you accidentally push this guy further up, you're not going to get it open. You've overset that, that pin. You may set this one, but, and this one's low enough that you can just probably bump them. This one should be complicated, but when I go in, I'm really only touching uh, this one or this one. Sometimes I can get this thing open with just like one one pin touch. This is holding it in your in your hand. The reason why uh, I I put it in a vise, the reason why I originally got a vise, is this gets fatiguing after a while. See, so see that one wasn't completely locked up. We got some weird going on here now. You don't want to rotate these cores. I'm going to have to pick it backwards. I got a click. I'm doing bottom of the keyway too. Stupid idiot. No wonder. Yeah, I noticed that when I was picking on this lock before that it'll get into weird conditions sometimes when you're when you're hand picking because you're you're turning the cylinder without a key in there to keep the the pins from falling back. See that should be open right there, but it's not. It's seized up. So I can keep going, but I'm going to have an issue. So let me let me straighten this out here. Okay, my problem was I had rotated it too far. So this is doing it with bottom of the keyway tensioning. If you look at this, see how much that that's taken up. But a lot of times you're not going to use the complete bottom of it anyway. You're going to kind of come off on this one side and lever up. You're trying to get around that that ledge. Let's see if I can do this. on camera for you so see how much that's already i'm trying to avoid that other pin but you can see when i when i go up to try to get past this other guy i'm pushing pin one up so sometimes well i got it sometimes uh you can't use bottom of the keyway tension properly you know i mean when you do like i said it's it's gobbling up a lot of space up there now you only got this area right here to move in from here up there. This will act as a ledge for you though. So if you've got a, a pick that doesn't rise up too high, it, it won't overset pins, but it's gonna have a hard time getting the, the pins that are, oops, I dropped the key. I keep my keys on a shackle like this, so I don't really need the keys. As you can see, but all right, so we're all set, right? <clears throat> you can bind the core down here too. I know I'm going through a lot of the basics on this, but it a lot of some basically I'm relearning myself, you know, because if you don't do something for I didn't touch a lock or a pick for two years. And when you tr when you try to do this after a while of not doing it, you you drop back a few levels of your skill. You know you 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 drop back a few. You can still get the basics, but the more difficult ones are going to be a little bit more challenging. 
and and that's what I'm basically doing is trying to uh, trying to get back into the. See, I can tell right now I've I've overset pins and stuff, so I'm just gonna reset it, and that's just pull it all the way back and start over. Now you see how easy it can be sometimes. All right, this one's going in. And kind of like wiggling around in there. I'm trying to touch each pin when I usually when I do this. I got a half a full set right there. That that's what you're looking for a lot of times. That means you've engaged a spool. And and when you push on it, it should push back. The pin that's that's the spool when you push on it should push back on your finger. That's called counter rotation. Now you're trying to set that pin, and when you do other pins are going to fall down uh, sometimes and that's all right you just deal with those when you when you get to them see now this one there can be different ways of, of picking a lock you know you can go through and and rake it where you don't worry about you're just trying to get in there and, uh, and that can happen too that happens a lot i forgot about that when i was I, when I did this the other day, I went, man, this sometimes can be very frustrating. You're sitting there trying to pick, and you've almost got it, and then, bing, there goes your tension wrench. And it's like, oh, my God. This, Like I said, lock picking is not for people that don't have any patience, really. You'll, you'll get tired of this real quick. You know, you're like, damn it. And if you've got any problem with uh, emotions or anything, stuff like that, if you're prone to anger, um don't don't even try lock picking this is for more that people that like a challenge and basically can take abuse you know and they're like all right i'm gonna learn this the hard way or the fast way but one way or another i'm gonna learn how to get into this thing and that's what it is a lot of times you hear all those fall back i don't know if you hear them talking too much and here i am trying bottom of the keyway because yeah, it throws your tension wrench off. You have to go find it. I don't know where it went. Oh, it's still in my lap. You drop your picks. You bend picks. You break picks. Um, I'm trying to do two tension wrenches at once. Let me put it back in a vise where you can see it. That's another thing. Your hand filming, filming lock picking. And picking a lock without anybody looking and all that other stuff are two different animals. You know, just like this. This is this is just the challenge part. Imagine if you're a real locksmith and you're out in the cold and everything. Well, you're not going to go through all this. You got tools, power tools at your disposal that'll cut that shackle in in no time. All right, that's that false set we were looking for. This is usually the challenge. This is all locks are designed to do, is slow you down. Especially if you're a picker. This is all, all this is just to slow you down. And uh, that's why most thieves, you know, like hardly any thieves pick locks. They cut shackles, they break windows, they find something, other way of getting in, you know? Uh, so all those people that are worried about, you're teaching people how to do something illegal. Uh, no, I'm teaching people how to pick a lock. What they do with that knowledge is entirely up to them. That's, that's on them. That's not on me. I'm not teaching people how to be a burglar. I mean, that. first off, I've, I've had people break into in my house. I've had stuff <clears throat> stolen from me. And uh, it's not a good feeling. And those people are scum of the earth. Because rather than working, they want to be parasites and steal off other people. <clears throat> yeah, I have, I have as much sympathy for thieves as I do for mosquitoes. You know, robbing blood off of me. I'll smack them if they get around me. <clears throat> See? There again. So you saw how easy the lock can be, and you saw how challenging the lock can be. Now this is with the pins on top. 
the Europeans pick them pinned down. I mean, you know, the pins, they, they install their locks upside down like that. I don't know why. It's just tradition. But it's different picking it upside down. So if, if you got into a lock real easily the first time, try something different. That's what I usually do. If, usually what I want to do, if I want to try to get into a, a lock real fast, I don't even try single pin picking, which is what I'm doing right now. I don't even try that. I did get a rake. I put it in there and get a rake. Now on a, anything that's got a security pins in it, the most you'll be able to get is a false set where you're, you're, uh, usually you're not going to be able to pick it open. Sometimes you got to pull this shackle. Because that is picked open. I don't know why it's not. Come oh, on, get out. There it is. There is it. No, that was. Is it out of there? Uh -uh. Dang it! You saw that? I had that thing picked open. Now we got it upside down. What the hell? You saw that, right? You saw that. You saw that happen. Now this thing's upside down, and the lock's not open. What the heck is going on here? Jumping G's host of facts. There we go. We rotate that cylinder all the way around. I must have had the cylinder rotated. A lot of times this is a, a date mark. All right, so let's do this again. Ding, dang it. Yeah, you can get into weird stuff when picking a lock. That's the one that... That was a spool. You saw the, the cylinder turn just a little bit. I hope you saw that. I'm down here trying to find find a binder. Yeah. Also, you can make you can make lock picking look easy if you're videotaping. You know. I could just edit, and the very first one that I did, that was my best one, Ping! look how easy this lock is, and I would be giving people a, a false impression, I guess some people do that, you know, to make themselves look good, I'm trying to do this to teach, not to, not to make myself look good or anything, but to teach what I've learned, and I'm, I'm no super duper expert, man, I just... Most of this stuff I learned on my own, watching videos, but mainly practicing. A lot of practicing. Because I got obsessed with it, man. I was like, every time I saw a lock, I wanted to pick it. it if it was on something that was not mine, I'd buy that lock and pick it. Just, you know, just to see. And it basically tells you how secure are our things. How, how good are locks? Locks can only be so good, you know. This one right here, I would say, is, is good enough. It's got a pretty thick shackle. It could be more protected. Talk about the disc type of locks. Let's see if we can get this guy open. Stop talking and get it open. And then you can do all your rambling. That's also where you get um, thinner picks. This one's 15,000. Most of the picks that you'll get on the basic sets will be like 30,000. Pretty, pretty wide. And that'll be okay for the El Chizo locks. But the more sophisticated you get... Usually, the more difficult they make it for you for picking. And, and you need a thin uh, pick to get past all this warding and to get up there. Like I said, you can get pretty involved in this stuff. I got some. Fall set now. 
Oh, man. <laughs> oh. All right. You see how stubborn I am? This is what you got to be. You got to be stubborn. You got to say, all right, I'm going to open you up. Buster, that's it. No more playing around. Oh. I can't get past that warding. And you'll get weird feeling in your pick when you do this bottom of the keyway tensioning. You'll get, you'll get weird feedback. Got a click. I'll probably overset somebody. A lot of times you can just ease up a little bit. I uh, eased up too much. And let one pin fall. But I let all fall. They all fall down. All right. That one's too big. Let me try this guy. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta... There we go. Finally. You are open. Yes. Shackle exposed. All right, yeah, so there you go. I know, I'm sorry that took so long, but you saw what happened. Sometimes when I pick it, I rotate the cylinder a little bit. And a lot of times you don't want to do this because uh, the pins up here in the top will fall into the pins where the key should be. They'll fall down there. And you've done what's known as a, a 180. You've rotated the cylinder too far. And when you do that, all the pins, now that the lock is upside down and you have to push the pins back up into the Bible, basically pick it again to go all the way back over the other way. We, we did that. You saw it go through all that. So there you go. I hope you found that enjoying. And if you didn't, you know, at least maybe it told you that lock picking is not for you. Or if, if you're the type of person that likes a challenge, really it's it's... It's interesting. It's a it's a very interesting hobby because um, it requires it requires things out of you besides just skill. It's like tenacity. Sometimes it's luck. You know, it's. I'd recommend it if you, if you're uh, if you like a challenge. I'd, I'd recommend trying to get into this because it's fun. It's fun when you when you get that shackle to pop and you didn't use a key. To me, that that's what got me addicted to it in the first place. Was that thrill of yes, you know, tactile feedback, success. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.